The silence of the night was suddenly broken, broken by the angelic announcement that bore the greatest news that the world back then so desperately needed to hear. The stillness of the night and the silence of the night was broken, suddenly broken by the angelic announcement that bore with it the greatest news that this world today still desperately needs to hear. So great and so wonderful was this news that it carried with it this heavenly headline, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. On that starry night so long ago, ago, the angelic announcement brought with it the greatest news that this world needed to hear, the greatest news that this world still needs to hear. It's news tonight that brings light into our darkness, news that brings hope into our hopelessness, news tonight that can bring, breathe life into death. It's news tonight that brings peace to the trouble. It's news tonight that brings joy to the downcast. It's news tonight. Not only does the world desperately need to hear, but it's the, it's the very news tonight, unsaved friend, you so desperately need to hear. Here's the news that came from heaven on that starry night so long ago. It's Luke's Gospel, chapter 2 and verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And my friend, as I draw this carol service to a close this evening, let me point you out three simple truths concerning that news that was broken so long ago. First of all, it was personal news, because the angel said, Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You see, friend, this news is personal tonight. Unto you, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. This was the news that heaven declared to a sinful, broken world. Mankind was left without hope. Mankind was left in darkness. Sin had gripped the heart and the soul of every man and woman born. This is the very news that every person who is born into this broken world desperately needs to hear. Why? The Scripture reminds us this evening, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, so death reigned upon all men for all of sin. My friend, this evening, unsaved friend, I want you to know tonight, this is good news for your heart. This is good news for your soul, because tonight you are lost in your sin. And tonight, friend, you're chained by the powers of darkness. Every person born into this world has been born under the death penalty of sin. And friend, this message tonight is the same message that God wants you to know. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There's one thing God wants you to know tonight, my dear unsaved friend. There's one thing God wants you to understand tonight. God loves you, and God loves you so much that He was willing to send His only begotten Son into this world for you and for me. 1 Timothy 2 and verse 4 speaks to us this evening, and it says, concerning God, who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And you know, my friend, God's desire for you is to be saved. God's desire for you, my dear unsaved friend, is not to be left chained and shackled by the chains of sin. 
Friend, it's God's word tonight, and it's God's will for you to be saved. My friend, God's not wanting you to be lost. God doesn't want you to end up in hell. Friend, God wants you to be saved tonight. For unto you was born that starry night so long ago, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The personal news. But it wasn't just personal news on that starry night so long ago. It was powerful news. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. There's two things God wants you to know tonight. Listen to me. Two things God wants you to know. Man is lost. Man's lost tonight. Man is lost because of his sin. Sin brought that terrible curse upon man's head. And everyone who has been born into this world has been born under that awful curse of sin this evening. Man's terrible condition is that he's lost. My dear unsaved friend tonight, God wants you to know because of sin you're lost. Because of sin tonight. You may say to me, well, George, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't have problem with sin. Listen, that's not the sin God wants you to know that you need to be forgiven from this, this evening. It's the very sin you were born with. Friend, you were born in sin tonight, and sin is the cancer of the soul that you need to be forgiven from. But you know, the Christmas message tonight is the greatest message that could ever be declared, because it not only tells us tonight that man is lost, it reminds us man is loved. Dear unsaved friend, grasp this this evening. I want you to know that God loves you, and God loves you so much that he was willing to give his only begotten Son into this world. The Christmas message underlines tonight the greatest verse in the whole of the Bible. It tells us this evening that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't send his Son into the world to start a religion. God didn't start, send His Son into the world to condemn the world. God sent His Son into the world so that you and I could be saved. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of a woman, made under the law to redeem them that were under the law. Why did God send His Son into the world? God sent His Son into the world because tonight, unsafe friend, you are lost in your sin. Friend, maybe you believe tonight your church can save you. Maybe you believe tonight your clergyman can save you. Maybe you believe tonight your pastor can save you. Friend, why did God send His Son into the world? The reason why He sent His Son into the world, because your church cannot save you. The reason why He sent His Son into the world, because your clergyman cannot save you. The reason why He sent His Son into the world is because the pastor cannot save you. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, a Savior. You know, friend, tonight, the year was 1847. And a clergyman came to a small French town. And in that small French town, there lived a man called Placide Capot. Placide Capot was a commissioner of wines, but a very gifted poet. The clergyman sought Placide Capot out and came to him and asked him, Placide, could you write me a poem that would be suitable to read at our carol service on Christmas Eve? Placide Capot was struck by the suggestion. This man wasn't saved. This man knew nothing of the gospel. So Placide Capot asked the clergyman for a copy of the Scriptures so he could read the Christmas story himself. As Placide Capot uh, entered a little dusty carriage, and as he traveled along the dusty uh, 
bumpy roads to Paris, he began to think of what the clergyman had asked him to do. He opened up the minister's scriptures to Luke's gospel, chapter 2, and read it over a number of times until he came to the verse I'm speaking on this evening. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And as Placid Capo read that as he journeyed in a dusty old chariot heading for Paris in 1847, he took up the challenge. And as he thought of what he read, three words appeared on the page, and the three words were, O Holy Night. Placid Capo found it a powerful message. So powerful was the message, he went on to finish the poem, and this was the poem. O holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining until He appeared and the soul felt its worth. My friend, tonight listen to me. Long have you continued in your sin. But my friend, I want you to know the Lord Jesus Christ was sent into this world to save you from that sin. And it's because God loves you tonight. And the greatest gift you could ever receive this Christmas time is the gift of God's so great salvation, which is in the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Listen to me. I'm not asking you tonight to receive anything. I'm asking you tonight to receive one. I'm asking you tonight to receive the Lord Jesus Christ. Friend, tonight you're lost in your sin. Tonight the Bible makes it clear. You're lost and you're bound for the caverns of hell. But the Christmas story tells us tonight God sent His Son into this world to save you from going to that awful place. You see, the one that was born on that starry night so long ago was to be the Savior of the world. A personal news, powerful news, ah, but precious news, because the one that was born was Christ the Lord. The Christmas message declares this tonight. God didn't leave us on our own. God didn't let mankind go there. God's love was set upon mankind so much that he sent, the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15, underlines the Christmas story. You know what the Christmas story means? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And the one born in Bethlehem's manger, that little babe, that tiny being that lay in the manger on that starry night so long ago, was the one who would be taken and nailed and spiked to an old rugged cross. You see, friend, this evening, why was he born to die? He was born to die to take your punishment. He was born to die to pay the price for sin. And my dear unsafe friend tonight, I want you to know this. He died on the cross for you. If you were the only person born into this world, Christ died on that cross for you. The message from the manger says that the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, my dear unsafe friend tonight, you need to know you're lost. You need to know tonight you're going down. But praise God, the one that was born so long ago was born to lift you because he loved you. And you know, the Lord Jesus Christ tonight is saying to your soul, as he said to my soul, he says to your soul, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. But my friend, this evening, that's the precious news, isn't it? It's Christ Jesus the Lord. You know, friend, tonight, how sad, how sad it is that so many people tonight spurn God's Son, spurn God's gift, so that you one day 
could be saved. You know, friend, it was Christmas time in Manhattan, the year 1952. The streets were thronged with Christmas shoppers. The snowflakes were gently falling, leaving everything covered in a blanket of sparkling white. The baiting wind in the air was nipping into the cheeks and into the hands of those who weren't properly covered up. The shopkeepers, they were playing carols on their gramophones, and Santa Claus, of course, was making the odd appearance, all of course, all of course to add to the Christmas season. In one of the exclusive restaurants in Manhattan that day, six ladies dressed in fine apparel were sitting around a table over by the window. In came one of their friends who went over to the ladies and says, Oh, what's the special occasion today? One of the ladies whose name was Barbara piped up and said, Oh, this is Joshua's second birthday. Isn't it hard to believe he's two? Her friend says, He's not two. Where is the wee man to get a wee look at him? But Barbara looked up and said, I'm sorry he's not with us because I have left him at my mother's to look after him. She says, you've what? I have left him at my mother's to look after him. I'll pick him up when the party's over. And you know, friend, that's a sad story, isn't it? To celebrate with Josh's birthday, him not even there, but yet how often we do it every year. Oh, friend, tonight we all want Christmas. Tell me this, do you want Christ? Because Christ tonight needs to be your Savior if you want to be in heaven. Listen tonight, if you want to escape the fires of hell and you want to be in heaven with God someday, remember the Word of God reminds us, prepare to meet thy God and we all must prepare to meet God. And the only one way, my dear unsafe friend, you'll ever prepare to meet God is to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the Savior. There's no other Savior tonight. And the one that the kids have been singing about, and the ones that we have been reading about, and the, ones that I am, the one that I am speaking about tonight needs to be your Savior. Friend, there's no other Savior. There's none other tonight that can save your soul. There's none other tonight that can give you eternal life. And my friend, pause for a moment and ponder this question. What will you do with Jesus that wants to save you? What will you do with Jesus that was born here in this world? What will you do with Jesus who died on the cross. But what will you do with Jesus, who tonight speaks to your sinful heart? What you do with Him will determine what He will do with you when you breathe your last upon this earth. The Christmas message is, Unsaved friend, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. The greatest news that the world back then so desperately needed to hear is the same news that this world desperately needs to hear. It's the same news, my dear unsaved friend, you desperately need to hear and hate. Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer together, please. Every head bowed, every eye closed. And tonight I wonder, has God been speaking to your heart? I wonder tonight, have you heard His voice? And I pray tonight, if He has, don't be like the innkeeper tonight. Don't close the door. Open the door and let Him in. Because whom to know tonight is to know life eternal. If you want to speak to me after this service has ended, please come and see me. If I can be of any help, you know, friend, none of us knows 
This town has had its wake-up call this week already. Two young lives. You know, friend, it could be you this incoming week. And that's why we need to make sure we're ready and trust the Savior who was born so long ago. It's between you and him. But if I can help you tonight, come and speak to me afterwards. Lord, in the light of what we have heard tonight, I pray that God the Holy Spirit will take that truth. And Father, draw the sinner to thyself this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the wonderful message of Christmas. We thank you, Lord, it's a message of love, mercy, and grace. And Lord, give the saving grace, we pray, for we ask it in our Savior's name. Amen. And amen.